stock market, investing, portfolio. If those words scare you, then you're in the right place. I got you. Those words used to sound like gambling, overwhelming, and intimidating to me. Yet at the same time, I also found it to be really intriguing. I found it to be really sexy and mysterious. So at the age of 22, I finally dived into investing and by 24, I built a six figure stock market portfolio, more than doubling my returns. And today I want to share with you my lessons as well as important investing knowledge in a very fun, easy to digest kind of way, as well as give some recommendations to help you build your investments as well. The first thing I did was I built my investing confidence by learning about investing and the stock market. I did a lot of research and after many, many hours of being so confused and being on the verge of tears, I finally got pretty confident to start. I want to start off sharing some of these important concepts that will help you understand why it's so important to invest and how to invest in a smart and intentional way. First things first, has anyone noticed how expensive everything has suddenly become? Food, gas, housing, this is called inflation. But did you also notice something else? Your salary has probably not increased at the same rate. And over time as inflation goes up, which on average it goes up at about two to 3% per year based on past trends, you won't be able to afford the things you were able to in the past and your money is going to be worth way less than before. So your savings account, it might be giving you a one to 2% interest rate, but by investing in the stock market, you are really protecting yourself from inflation because historically based on past trends, the stock market has averaged an approximate eight to 10% average return. Now there are three main ways to make money from the stock market. The first way is by starting off with a lot of money. A 10% growth on $1,000 is $100. Now a 10% growth on $100,000, that's $10,000. But the thing is, not everyone has a few grand laying around or even a few hundred dollars ready to be invested every month. At least I don't. And so the second way to make some money from the stock market is through time. It is so important to start investing as early as you can, even if it's just $50, $100 a month. This is because of something called compound interest. And this really pretty much just means your money is growing magically over time. So let's say you have $10 and you put it into a bank savings account that gives you a 10% interest rate. Now in the first year you would make a dollar because 10% on $10 is $1. So that means at the end of the year you would have $11, the $10 plus the $1 interest. Now in the second year, that 10% interest will be applied not just to the $10 you originally had, but also to the extra $1 interest you earned from the year before. And so that means your interest for the second year is now $1.10. You now have $12.10. And if we continue doing this for some time, in your eighth year, you would have already doubled your money just from leaving your money in that 10% things account. That my friend is called compound interest. Similar to everything else in your life, it's all about the little things you do every single day that really compound into big things over time really quietly. Getting some exercise, some movement every single day is gonna really build up. Learning 10 minutes a day is really gonna help you expand your wisdom and your knowledge. And investing, investing in the stock market every single month can help you become a millionaire. After learning this concept, you bet I was investing every single month. After my paycheck would hit the bank account, I would transfer that over and I would start investing. You can also automate this process so that money from your checking account can be immediately sent into your investments and that's gonna help you stay consistent so you build wealth quietly. Now I'm gonna walk you through three different character scenarios. Introducing character one, Smart Sally. She's 20 years old and she invests $100 a month. And after 45 years of investing, she walks away with a million and $57,000 and the amazing thing is she only invested $54,000, which is 5% of the million dollars. How amazing is that? Okay, character two is up. We have here late Larry. He is a little late to the investing game and he discovers it when he's 30 years old. So he invests $100 a month, similar to Smart Sally, and he does it month after month, $100, $100, and what he walks out with after 35 years is $382,000. Oh my God, that is way less compared to Sally. And he invested about $42,000, which is like a 10,000 difference compared to Sally. 10 year difference, a 10K difference amounts to $700,000 difference in wealth. I'm shook. Now our last character, Aggressive Andy. 
He also discovers investing later on in life at the age of 30, but he decides to double his investments and do $200 a month. So after 35 years of investing, he gets to walk out with $762,000 of which he's invested 11% of it. So choose your character. I just want to show you how important it is to start as early as possible, even if you only have a little bit to spare every single month, because little by little, it will compound for you. Even if you invest later on and you invest more like aggressive Andy, it still does not compare to smart Sally when you're investing early and consistently. Now, when you go into a relationship with the stock market, it really is like going into a relationship with a person. Like any relationship, it's not always a rainbows and sunshines and butterflies. There will be ups and downs, a lot of emotions involved, but if you stay in the game, you stay consistent, there is a trend based on history that you will profit from this relationship. It's like how in a healthy relationship, there's gonna be disagreements, there's gonna be fights, but what is most important is that you stick through it and over time you will be able to build even more trust even more of a deeper connection and better communication as well as deeper love and because i had this mindset i did not sell out my stocks when there was a massive dip in 2020. i didn't sell any of my stocks when that happened even though it was really really scary because i knew of this investing principle that really grounded me this is so important because there were some experienced investors who were youtubers who actually ended up selling off a lot of their stocks, maybe even all of their stocks, and then they regretted all their losses later on. Learning to manage your emotions is so, so important, and this applies to everyone, regardless of your expertise. And this is why education and mindset is so important to really help you manage your risk. Now, all of the numbers and the investments I've mentioned so far in this video are all about ETFs, which stand for exchange traded funds. ETFs are kind of like a bundled group of stocks, a bundled group of companies instead of just one company stock. There are real estate ETF bundles that invest in real estate companies. There are mid cap ETF bundles that invest in mid sized companies. There are S and P 500 ETF bundles that invest in the 500 largest U S companies. Now that's the ETF I've been referring to so far in my video. And that is the first ETF that I started investing in. By investing in these ETFs, I'm trusting that over time and by time, I really mean decades and decades of time that these U.S. large companies will be doing better and better in time and that the U.S. economy will also be improving. Historically, the S&P 500 has generated an average return of about 8 to 10 percent per year. The only thing is I kind of got impatient with ETF investing because it does take a lot of time for the money to grow. So since I had some time and energy on hand, I then went into the third path of making money through the stock market. The final way to make money through the stock market is through your own research and analytical skills. I like to group this into two main categories, long-term investors and short-term traders. Your long-term investors are your growth, value investors, dividend investors. This kind of investing requires a lot of knowledge about the industry, about the company itself, the company's quantitative data like financial information, financial ratios. Now your short-term traders are the ones who are trying to profit off of short-term price fluctuation. They really look at candlestick charts, market news, indicators to help them profit from short-term price changes either within a day, weeks, or months. So I decided to join the long-term investors and I specifically wanted to focus on growth investing, which means trying to invest in companies that I found where I believed had a lot of growth potential. The ones that really helped me do really well with my stock market performances and by well, I mean like doubling and tripling my money were these two stocks that I really love, Shopify and Aritzia. So Shopify is in the e-commerce space and because I dabbled with dropshipping back when I was in high school, I knew a lot about Shopify and I knew how powerful it was because it was helping connect a lot of businesses with selling things online. So I invested very consistently from the start with Shopify. And what can I say? I'm a huge fan of Aritzia, their clothing, look at this cute, and their brand. I know it's just super, super powerful. I also learned about the financial numbers because I bought a couple of courses that really went in depth with this. But I'm not gonna lie, I have lost money from mm -hmm. investing in individual stocks like Tesla, Pfizer, just because everyone was talking about it and I was just jumping on the hype train. 
If you want to start investing in individual stocks and companies, I highly, highly recommend starting off with companies or industries that you are really, really familiar with because it also makes it very interesting, passionate for you to start that whole process. And you probably already have some insight knowledge on that company or industry. You really want to make sure you invest in companies with real substantial value. Do your own research and don't rely on Reddit or Facebook groups. And by the way, just because the stock price goes up does not mean its value has gone up. It could have just went up because of market news and you know all these short-term noise. And just because a company price has gone down does not mean that its value has gone down. You've got to do your research. At the same time, financial numbers are really important. As I said, invest in your knowledge if you're really keen on this. Take a course, get mentorship on this because financial numbers there's a lot of different moving pieces here. Different industries have different ratios, and at the same time, there really are no right or wrong answers sometimes with numbers. So let's say for example, so just because a company has a lot of debt compared to another company that has like no debt, the company with a lot of debt could be trying to fund a couple of exciting projects coming up that could even pay off in the long term. There's also different accounting principles like GAAP or IFRS and different companies might use different accounting principles. It can get very difficult trying to compare different companies' financials if they are under different accounting principles and honestly, financial statements, they can also be manipulated. If you're really interested in learning about this, I highly recommend investing in a course, investing some money, time and energy into really learning about this. While I'm super happy that I invested in growth stocks because it accelerated my portfolio really quickly and I'm also investing in companies that I genuinely care about, I really love, I love their products and their services. It has been super risky just because I'm investing in individual companies and that's really risky. You're putting a lot of eggs in one basket. I highly recommend not doing this unless you have the expertise, that knowledge behind it. It also takes a lot of time and energy to keep up with the, all the information just to make sure that you are updated with the company. Along the way, I realized I would rather put my energy towards creating content like this, to coaching people, which has opened up a lot of different opportunities, new streams of income for me, far exceeding my stock investments. Instead of putting my time and energy into keeping up with the companies I was investing in. And because of all of this, I'm investing in ETFs. By investing in ETFs, I don't have to check up on companies' performances. I don't have to worry about what's going on. I'm just buying these ETFs and I'm holding it for the long term. This also reduces risk a lot because I'm not putting all my eggs into one basket, into one company. Instead, I'm diversifying it. I'm investing into a bunch of companies that historically has had a track record of about 8 to 10 percent average annual return. Another ETF I've been investing in is called ESG, which stands for Environmentally Socially Responsible companies that aim to do better in terms of in the environment, socially, and in corporate governance. I want to be very intentional with where I'm putting my money because I do want my money to actually be doing good and doing better for the world. With all of this said, before you start investing, assess your circumstances and ask yourself what's really appropriate for you right now in this season of life. Where do you want to put your time, energy, and money? If you have a lot of money up front, you might want to consider dividend stock investing. They pay you every quarter or every year, and that could be a very significant source of income for you. So for example, AT&T currently pays a 6.88% dividend, which means that 6.88% multiplied by their stock price of $16.14, that equates to a dividend of $1.11 per stock that you own. So let's say you invest $500,000 into AT&T you will then have 30,978 shares and you will earn about $34,000 from dividends. They pay every quarter, at least from past records. So assuming that the stock price has been the same, you would be earning $137,000 a year from dividends, not taking account taxes and fees. Or if you're intrigued and you're interested in learning about companies, industries, company financials, all that kind of jazz, just like how I was in the past. And if you have that time and capacity to, I would say invest in some coaching or invest in mentorship to help you ramp up in that area. And if you have a lot of time on hand and you want to make quick short term profits, even within a day, weeks or months, then maybe you want to consider day trading or doing options trading. If you're interested in learning about candlestick charts or market news, then this could be an area you could try. Or you might just be like me, 
I don't have the time, energy, or the interest to dive into what other companies are doing, trying to keep up with them. Instead, I'm focused on building my own company and I just feel so passionate about all the work I'm doing right now. In the meantime, I will be investing in S&P ETFs as well as ESG ETFs. There is no right or wrong with your approach to investing, your relationship with the stock market. It really depends on your own personal circumstances. And lastly, before you invest in the stock market, I just want to first off say you are going to be your biggest investment in your whole life. Alex Hormozzi said it best, you are worth more than a 10-15% return from the stock market. Invest in your knowledge and skills, invest in time because you can never buy that back with money and invest in your health because that is truly wealth. I hope this video helped you learn more about the stock market and investing foundations. I would love to know what hit home for you today down in the comments below and let me know what kind of relationship will you be having with the stock market. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!